Yeah, I'm actually from Williamsburg from your uh, sister of yours. Uh, and Williamsburg, you know, when it comes to gentrification has changed a lot, especially within the last two years when it comes to the virus. And I remember when I was there about two years ago, uh, all the storefronts were closed, right? And uh, because the rent was very expensive, and especially for, for folks within our community. And now a lot of folks from out of state that are not Latinx or African-American managed to get a lot of loans and grants to open a bunch of stores and, 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 and uh, storefronts uh, in Williamsburg. How can the money that is gonna be, gonna be allocated for our communities, are there any checks and balances that are actually going to reach well, the our money, communities? The money is going to come uh, and it's going to be the largest investment. But let me talk to you about um, the displacement of people of color. So that has to do with local policy. When you do rezoning at the city level in the city council, I have always said, show me one rezoning that has resulted in public benefit. I oppose rezoning in Williamsburg, but you know what? I don't have a vote in the city council. It was Vito Lopez who basically negotiated with Bloomberg the rezoning of Williamsburg. And I predicted that it will result in the displacement displacement of people of color. And, and, and it happened. Whenever I have an opportunity to oppose a rezoning yes. like the one in Sunset Park or Gowanas, I've been against it. It takes the city council members, it takes the activists to demand from those city officials to do right by the communities that they represent. And, and the, the PPP loans. Another thing I yeah, want yeah. to say and then I'm going to need you because I have to go. Yeah. It was mentioned before, we put lots of money into CDFIs and MDRs, Community Development Financial Institutions and Minority Development Institutions. These are institutions whose, pro, whose goal, whose sole purpose is to get money to the small minority businesses that are often neglected by the banks and the other traditional financial institutions. $15 billion, I worked very hard to get that in the first, the second bill, and now in this bill. And that should be a lifeline to our minority businesses and to those minority folks who want to start up a business. It'll be a huge change if we pass this bill. I gotta go. Okay. So thank you.